Thank you for this talk. Let's open to questions. Martin. Of course, there is the uh, concern about the uh, rare possibility of an asteroid impact. And if you want to deflect an asteroid, you need to know its consistency. I mean, yes. can you deflect it without it breaking up into smaller pieces, which would make the impact even worse? Can you say anything about uh, the deflection techniques and whether they will work, given that constraint? Um, one of the reasons we're convinced that asteroids are so porous, I showed an image of one of them that has eight very large craters on its surface, no one crater that big could exist on a solid rock because it would shatter the body. But because they're not solid rocks, it means that you've set up an explosion. You, you try to put an, an atomic bomb to blow up an asteroid like they do in the Hollywood movies. And it will mostly compress the asteroid without actually uh, destroying it. You also have to worry about the fact that there's always a probability, even with our best orbits, we can say that a particular object might have a 50% probability of hitting the Earth. If you do blow it into a thousand bits, you go from a 50% chance of missing to a 100% chance that half of it will hit. This is not necessarily an improvement. Uh, perhaps the best way of solving the problem is to go up there well in advance and take it apart, bit by bit. Uh, but Deflection, which means dis, you know, determining its orbit 50 years in advance to give slow deflection a chance to operate is probably the most efficient way of, of deflecting it. Uh, I have a question on this uh, space mining of metals. Uh, did one calculate the carbon print of per ton of such an adventure? Um, the ones that I measured was, in fact, for a stony meteorite that has very little carbon. The ones that are likely to be uh, taken apart in the near future are carbon rich. The carbon would not be returned to Earth. The carbon would be used in space, just as the water would be used in space. One thing that only a few people have recognized is that the carbon in these meteorites is not pure graphite. It's actually complicated organic gunk, most of which is uh, a risk for giving cancer to people. It's the kind of stuff that you don't want in your lab unless you've got uh, ways of taking care of it. So I would assume that most of the work, in fact, will be done robotically because of the number of risks otherwise of working with this material. This is only part of the answer because there is also the carbon consumption to go there and to bring the material and bring it back, which means a CO2 production. Um, in the long run, I can't believe that we'll go to space by burning carbon. Um, in fact, most rocket fuels, uh, most, you, you can have a very efficient rocket fuel that, that is based on nothing more than hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the British launched their one and only satellite using a hydrogen peroxide rocket. There are ways of doing this without burning carbon. Professor Shu? What are the prospects there will be enough water on Moon, given solar power and energy storage, that that could be the energy source for both slow deflection and actually mining things? Uh, we don't have the numbers yet. There probably is a significant amount of water in the poles of the moon. Whether it's efficient to get it off the moon to where we want it is still to be asked. We are assuming that the dark asteroids are water rich, but we don't know that. No, I was actually thinking you set up a solar station on the moon. Uh -huh. You have energy storage on the moon. You turn the water into fuel on the moon. Yeah. And, but, but still getting it off the moon to wherever else you want to use oh. it is, is the last step along the way. Um, the, the, the asteroid, the, the, the mission that's going to asteroid Bennu, Bennu is a relatively uh, not as dark as, as some asteroid, which most of us think have water in it. But it will be nice to get a piece back to find out, because not everything that's black is water rich. So it's uh, exactly time to 
stop the morning session and to have lunch and we reconvene at 2.30. Thank you very much and we applaud again the speakers.